food in front of me and a beautiful babe. Big Bad Bob feels something. I'll call it hungry. Nope. What was that, Carly? Guess. I don't know. It was kind of fishy. You're getting warm, Big Bad Bob. Hey, I get a lot warmer than that. I get hotter than a pistol, you just treat me right. That was salmon tartare on endive leaf with a dill garnish. Now, try this one. Mmm. Mm. Folks, I tell ya, it ain't steak and potatoes, but it ain't half bad. A crabbed meat salad tartlet with a hint, just a hint, of tomato, chili, chutney. Mm. Honey, I'd eat your chutney any day of the week. <laughs> and so can you, folks. Just enter the contest, and you could be one of three lucky listeners to win a catered meal on the house from Carly's Creations. Tasty, wholesome food for that special occasion, prepared exactly the way you want it by Carly Hunter herself. And speaking of dishes, here once more with the skill testing question is that tasty tartlet, Carly Hunter. Open the door for me? Now! There you go. Thank you. How was I? Did you get his autograph? Very good. You have a very good voice for radio. Did you get it? Yes, yes. Oh, he's something that bad, boy. Felix, the, the lock, the lock. Do you have to unlock his voice? Every time I hear him speak, I get the feeling of a tingle. <laughs> What's he look like? A warthog. No. I hear he's being sued for sexual harassment. The man loves women. Why is this a crime? The issue is consent, Mrs. K. Oh. Excuse me? <laughs> have, have we met? He's from the city. Something about a license. I don't know. A license for what? <laughs> Not a restaurant, sir. This is my kitchen. I, I cook here. And this facility is also used for commercial purposes. No. Dinner for a few friends and neighbors. <laughs> I'm afraid it's gone beyond a few friends, Miss Hunter. We at the Licensing Bureau also listen to the radio. It's a giveaway. It's a promotion. And this is a viable commercial enterprise. And we will require a GH 16 slash 4 HW backslash 3 classification F, which you can apply for at the City Licensing Bureau. Right. Well, how much? $1,200. Have a nice day. <laughs> what? I don't have $1,200. I don't have twelve dollars. <sighs> I should have stayed at Francesco's. Well, Francesco would take you back in the flat. Oh yeah, he'd love that, wouldn't he? <laughs> what? You think you don't need me after all I've done for you? You'll never survive without Francesco. He's right. <laughs> Who is it? It's uh, Sophie. I would rather run a hot dog stand. Sophie. Sophie. Sophie, calm down. <laughs> You can't, don't worry, you can't screw up Bill Scalapini. It is idiot proof. I don't understand. I did everything you said. This is not how I traditionally serve Bill Scalapini. I mean, I, I, I rolled it in the flour. Then I, then I threw in the veggies and stuff. After you browned the veal. Browned? Browned. You mix olive oil and butter and you cook the meat until it's brown. And then you add the basil and the oh, I stuff. I did that at the end. No, no. See, it's difficult to brown the meat after it's been a. Uh... Well, you oh, didn't well. say that. I just assumed you knew. But you're right, I'm sorry I didn't. It's 20 minutes. He's gonna be here in 20 minutes. I mean, I, I made a whole big deal about giving him a home-cooked meal. He's gonna think I can't cook. You can't cook. 
All right. Okay. Uh, you go and fix your hair. Oh my God, my hair. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Holy chow. Oh my god, Carly, you are a genius. What is it? Linguine chinoise avec blue cheese sauce. Now look, Sophie, when what's his face arrived? Tobias. Tobias. Mm -hmm. Just boil the water, mm -hmm. cook the pasta, add the butter, mm -hmm. and the cheese. Mm -hmm. Why? Where are you going? To rob a bank. I'm 1200 bucks short of a GH16 slash 48W classification F. Carly, please. Miss Al is fine. Just add the dressing. And listen, don't forget to boil the water before you cook the pasta. No, Carly, you can't go because I'll, I'll get confused and I'll just mess it all up. I know it will. It'll just be a big Shh, disaster. Please. Really confused about what? No, that's too biased, Carly. Please. Please don't go. I'll pay you. How much? Whatever you want. Okay, first things first. Get a cocktail into him. Cocktails. Okay. Let him see you. <laughs> it's a living. <laughs> I'll just go give the pasta a little stir. Here, let me help you. No, 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 no. Uh, too many cooks. Do you know what they say? You just finish your wine, and uh, I'll be back in a flash. Okay, here we are. Coming! Chester, what are you doing here? Aren't you gonna invite me in? No, I am not. I am going to ask you to please leave my house and leave me alone. Who's he? Tobias McNeish, Chester Winfield. Hey, I've seen you on TV. You're the sex therapist. What are you doing here? Actually, that's none of your business. And if you wouldn't mind running along, Sophie and I have a few things we'd like to talk no, about. No, Chester, we have nothing to talk about because we're through. Sophie, please do not humiliate yourself. After all the work we've been through, nurturing your self-image, here you are once again declaring yourself unfit for love. I am fit for love, Chester, just not with you. You are so close to being healed. I don't want to let you slide back into self-loathing. The only person I loathe here is you. Now get out! You heard her. How do you know it was Winifield? Well, I saw him. You know him personally? Everybody knows him. He's got a TV show and books and Professor Passion. Did you know that uh, he and Miss Weston had been involved? No. But I did know that she wanted to impress uh, Tobias. Uh, Tobias. And I was uh, hiding here in the kitchen. I don't understand. <laughs> she wanted him to think that she was cooking, like Cyrano de Bergerac. That's not a real person. I know. So Tobias falls in love with your cooking and thinks it's Miss Weston. Right. 
You're sure that Winifield didn't see you? He would have shot me, too. Okay, I'm gonna have someone drive you home. <sighs> it's hot. I didn't do anything, I just watched. Hey, don't do that. All right, don't blame yourself. You did the only thing you could have done. Okay? I'm okay, honestly. Thank you very much. You've been very kind. You're welcome. Thanks, officer. No problem. You want some tea? Yes, please. You should have seen. There was this great news flash, and then they said Sophie Weston and the address. And I said to Felix, isn't that where Carly is? Uh, Mrs. K. Yes? No. Yes, of course. Of course. Oh, you poor darling. You need a little pick-me-up. Little drop of gin, huh? Thank you, Elliot. I, uh, I, I saw some linguine in the fridge. Do you want me to heat no, it up? thank you. Would you mind just sitting here with me for a little bit before you go home? Sure, yeah, of course. I didn't do anything. I just stood there. Of course I knew her. She was a client of mine for three years. Were you also lovers? She loved me. I'm afraid it wasn't mutual. It's an occupational hazard. Were you intimate? No. She had profound self-image problems. But she was making progress. And where were you tonight, Dr. Winfield? The clinic. By yourself? With a client. And her name? Miss Jeffries. Just the two of you then? My assistant was there. Miss Lansbury? Yes. Do you often work at night? I try not to, but Miss Jeffries is a new patient. She wanted to see me, so I tried to accommodate her. And where did you go after the clinic? Came straight home, poured myself a scotch, turned on the news, and found out about poor Sophie. Do you have any idea who might have done this? No. Why would anybody want to kill Sophie? Well, it's usually either money or love. Or love. Well, I think that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Oh, um, you said her name was Jeffries. Ida. Ida. Okay, great. Thank you. This car was seen parked outside the Weston house, and here in this WNKW exclusive, we can see the driver of that car, believed to be Carly Hunter herself, being led away from the murder scene by city police. However, sources close to Sergeant Jack Brannigan continue to claim the cut-rate caterer is not the prime suspect. The cut-rate caterer? It started already. Wait till they find out about Winifield. Winifield story checkout? Yeah, he says he was at his clinic till 9.30, confirmed by his personal assistant, Allison Lansbury, who was also there, so she says. Now, her logbook confirms the session with Ida Jeffries. Do you think he's sleeping with either of them? I tell you, I say Ida Jeffries for sure, but Lansbury's an old flame. I mean, I think they'd say anything he wanted. But their stories hold. Yeah, so far. 
Five bullets fired, 38 caliber, all recovered. Now, Winifield owned the gun, but reported it stolen two years ago, a 38. And we've got his paw prints all over the Weston house. But he and Sophie did some of the therapy sessions there, right? Oh, come on, Jack. Give me a motive. This is Chester Winifield. He can have any woman he wants. Except Sophie Weston, according to what Carly Hunter overheard. So Sophie dumps him in his ego, couldn't take it? Hey, maybe he thought it was bad for business. No one saw him enter or leave the house. We have no weapon. We have an eyewitness. Who admits to being in the house when the murder was being committed. Who had a reason to be there, who called the police, who was offered to cooperate in any way that she can. What else do we know about her? She did the Cordon Bleu course in Paris, worked in France for a couple years, came back here and got a job as a pastry chef at Francesco's. I love Francesco's. Anyway, she uh, left, uh, had a falling out, and started her own catering company. Married? Single, no kids. Lonely type, solitary? Everyone that I talked to liked her, except Francesco, but he's been losing business ever since she left. Plain Jane, femme fatale. I see. Pretty girl. Just keep an open mind, Jack. Always. Jack, it's going to be her word against his. If I go into court against Chester Winifield, I do not intend to be made a fool of. I know, I know. So this was the first time that you saw him? I told you, in person, yes. You were never a client of his? No. No personal connection whatsoever? No. Would you consider Sophie a close friend? Well, not really. I catered some business functions for her. I liked her. Strictly business, then? What else? I don't know. What else is there? Nothing. What are you getting at, detective? My problem with Miss Jeffrey's story is that there's no record of her calling you from her apartment last night. Maybe she used a cell phone. Mm. But if she was at home, why would she call you on a cell phone? More to the point, why would she lie? And why would I lie? I don't know. Unless, of course, I shot Sophie and Mr. McNeish. That would be a reason, yes. Chester, I remind you, you're here voluntarily. You don't have to answer. But why would I kill them? Because she dumped you. Oh, come on, Jack. If you want to go fishing, get a boat and a bucket of worms. Why exactly did you leave Francesco's? Because he used cheap ingredients and he charged too much and he didn't pay me enough. And what the hell does he have to do with this? I understand that you threatened him. No, it wasn't a threat. I smacked him with a cheese grater. How long have you had a gun license? 20 years. You ever buy a gun? Once, in 1991, it was a 38. You know, that gun was stolen two years ago. I know that it was reported stolen. Have you ever owned a gun? No. I wouldn't know how to use one. You don't honestly believe that I shot them, do you? That Chester Winifield is a murderer. Did you know that there was no weapon found at the scene? Oh, don't tell me. They were shot with a 38. All right, that's enough. You offered to help in any way you can, and now he's trying to incriminate you without a shred of evidence. Henry, they have an eyewitness, somebody who saw the whole thing, and now she's blaming me. He has an alibi. Well, he's lying. He's too cool. What about this eyewitness? Relax, he's yanking my chain. It's psychology 101. Oh, God, there's a mob out there. Let's go the back way. Henry, I've got nothing to hide. OK. Don't speak to the media. Don't talk about this to anyone. In fact, the best thing of all would be to lay low. It's hard to cook when you're laying low. I'll arrange for an unlisted number. I can't have an unlisted number. I run a business out of my apartment. Maybe you should put your business on hold for a while. What? No, I'm sorry. I just got this thing off the ground. If I put it on hold, I can kiss it goodbye. Hi. Who's he? Elliot Saunders, my neighbor. You live in the building? Yeah, across the hall. OK. I'll be in touch. No, 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 no. Go out the back way. Come on. Maybe I should take you home. No, I'm fine. Thank you. What about the woman who was in the apartment? Is it true that she's accusing you of the murders? What, what My understanding you, is, is your... that she is a caterer who was cooking for Sophie. Now, whether there was 
something more to this relationship or, or how it involved me. I... There she is. Chester, I advise against this. Henry, duly noted. Don't do it. Are you Carly Hunter? And when did you know that you and Sophie were lovers? Was it a threesome? What about the bloody Could you bloody Miss Hunter. Chester Winifield. I know who you are. Why won't you shake his hand? Yeah, why won't you shake your hand, Doc? The police say you saw something. You know what I saw. No, I don't. Why are you blaming me? Don't you think we should be helping one oh, another? Come on. If we helped one another, we could get to the bottom of this. If... For anybody who read my second book, Fear of Fantasy. Follow me. Can't pay the rent? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm a cool kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> All clear. All right. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this. Scoot. contest winners all pulled out because of this murder business. But there's no such thing as bad press. Carly, it's Sid Harris from the Harris Agency. It's crucial we talk ASAP in terms of putting together a complete package. Carly, this is Lonnie Geffen. I'm a defense attorney. You've probably seen me on Geraldo. Carly, this is Belle Gittleson. We, uh, in terms of dinner next Friday, we, uh, well, we may be going to Florida, and, uh, well, we'll be in touch. Sugar, spice, and everything nice go into cookies and cake. Falsehood, fibs, and dirty lies do a dead caterer make. Remember, Carly, you can run, you can hide, but you can't get away from me. Carly! <gasps> Jesus, Elliot, don't sneak up on me like that. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to see if you were all right. I heard that. We should call the police. No, it's a crank. They'll call somebody else tomorrow. That is ridiculous, and you know it. Listen, Elliot, if I call the police, they're going to put me under wraps until God knows when, and everything that I've worked for will just go up in smoke. Things will change. Then move in with me. I, I don't mean... For now, at least I can take care of you, and you can run Carly's creations from next door. That's very sweet of you, Elliot. But they haven't driven me out of here. Not yet, anyway. Okay, I understand. The offer's always open. You are so cool. <laughs> but it's probably some psycho fan of Winifield's just trying to scare me off. It's... Don't worry. I'm gonna be fine, okay? Well, I'll, uh, I'll just be across the hall. If you need me, just holler. Help! <laughs> like that? That would do it. Okay. Bye. <laughs> and you've uh, checked into all of this with a fine tooth comb? There were four people in her apartment when Sophie called. They all confirmed her story. 
So she's got her alibi and he's got his. Look, I believe her. I know you do. So do you. So give me something or I can't charge him. I thought I'd take another shot at Lansbury. The long-suffering ex-mistress? If she's lying to protect him, that makes her accessory to double homicide. Oh, uh, she's not going to betray him. Not if she's still under his spell. Mm, maybe she won't be if she's persuaded that he really loved Sophie enough to kill her. Hell hath no fury. Something like that. Jack, if you're wrong about this... I know, I know. I'll be pounding the beat in the view. Just be careful. Thanks. Mm. Mrs. K, mm -hmm. try this. Mm. Mm. Need sugar. Do you have another beer, darling? It's a lemon sauce. It's supposed to be tart. Hey, come here. A shocking turn of events in the Weston McNeish double murder. After two weeks of intensive questioning, police today arrested and charged Dr. Chester Winnefield with two counts of murder one. The best-selling author, TV star, and sex therapist was taken into custody at his Forest Hills mansion just moments ago. Now, the key to his arrest was this woman, Allison Lansbury, Winnefield's one-time paramour and longtime assistant. Last night, Lansbury agreed to turn state's witness in return for immunity after police confronted her with phone records, which right. suggested she had been lying to protect Winnefield. Well, it was enough for the people's primo crime buster, Violet Speary, who decided to put Professor Passion on ice. Now, the key to this whole That's case you. remains Carly Hunter, former pastry chef at Francesco's, infamous grazing ground of the Demi Monde. But just who is this saucy spinster, this cut-rate caterer whose cut testimony rate. might get Professor Passion fast fried? Well, some have linked her romantically to both Winnifield and the late lamented Sophie. Whatever her what? motive, it's Hunter herself who will soon be on the grill as Winnifield assembles his legal dream team. I thought you said you and Sophie were just friends. Mrs. K, it's lies. They're just making this stuff up. Oh, I, I don't apologize, my dear. I know my cousin, she was quite the tomboy, but a very nice person. Boy, could she hit a baseball. <laughs> what? Miss Hunter, this is Detective Brannigan. Way to go, Jack. You got him. How'd you do it? The wheel, the rack, hot pincers? Flintstone reruns. Whoa, you have a cruel streak. Actually, I just reminded her that lying to protect a murderer would make her an accessory and liable to the death penalty if convicted. But I didn't press the point. I was very polite. Well, good manners are always a plus, Mom always said. So, he's in jail? At the moment, yes. Tomorrow's the bail hearing. But, but he's not getting out? Not likely, no. Well, that's good, because I've already lost four gigs. I was verbally abused by six of his fans at the supermarket yesterday, and my tires were slashed. On the other hand, I was invited to a woman's weekend retreat in Wisconsin. That's woman with oh. a Y, me, oh. Ellen, Katie. Oh, uh, well, that's, uh, that's nice. I said no, thank you. Are you feeling okay? You know, maybe you should talk to one of our psychologists. No, I'm fine, thank you. Now, with Winterfield in jail, I'm feeling much better. There's still a trial. I'm gonna testify, I said I would, don't worry. Oh, no, no, I just meant that, you know, if there was anything that I, uh, I mean, we, the, uh, the, um, police can do. I'm fine. Thank you, detective. Okay. Counselor? Your Honor, counsel's motion to deny bail is truly vindictive. This is a ridiculous witch hunt brought on by the hysterical delusions of one alleged eyewitness. But that fact notwithstanding, I can guarantee, Your Honor, that Dr. Winterfield will not flee. Not only because he has no reason to flee, but because he would never abandon his practice or the people who depend upon him. Now, I urge the court to set the doctor free on his own recognizance. Miss Berry? Your Honor, flight is not the only issue here. It's obvious that the defendant has been using the media to intimidate our key witness and prevent her from testifying. We feel that this is further reason to deny the defendant bail at this time. Mr. Green? Oh, Your Honor, nothing could be further from the truth. The public is outraged and they can hardly be blamed. In fact, this alleged eyewitness would be in real trouble if Dr. Winnefield had not repeatedly urged the public to remain calm. Thank you, Mr. Green. The court acknowledges the charge of multiple homicide is very grave indeed, but the court is inclined to agree with defense that Dr. Winnefield poses no danger and is no threat to flee. Bail is set at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Good job. I 
told you, Cupcake, there's no such thing as bad press. I thought you said everyone canceled. They did. So I just put a little different spin on it. She was dishing up the scallopini when poor Sophie and Toby went down for the count. Now, Professor Passion is saying it's not just her yams that are fried to a crisp. Are you curious? Scared? Is this the hot pepper your party needs to sizzle? Enter now, and you too could spend an evening with the celebrity chef everybody's talking about. Gee, Bob, that's so good, I almost forgot two people were murdered. All this in just three days. And 90% of them are from the toniest addresses in town. Honey, you're radical chic for about 15 minutes. So if I were you, I'd be cashing in while I could. And it just gets better. Sometimes I think I'm blessed. What? Bad Bob here, boys and girls, and this just in. Professor Passion's out on bail. And I'm with you-know-who. That's right, the yummy hamster herself, Carly Hunter, ready to divulge her deepest doubts, her darkest despair. Come on, Carly, honey. Spill your gorgeous guts. <laughs> God, they replicate. Can you just shoot them? They don't die, they mutate. Look, is there some other way in? Yeah, turn left at this corner right here. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh. <sighs> you remember Detective Brannigan? Mm -hmm. Hi. So did you hear? Winifield got bail. He did? Who else knows about this? And nobody. Good. Let's keep it that way. That looks good. You shouldn't be so rude. Elliot's been a big help. Oh, has he? Oh, my God. Never try to tell a lie when we know it isn't true or you'll find out the hard way how to make a caterer blue. Yeah, it's Brandon here. Listen, I'm with Carly Hunter in her apartment. There's been a break-in. I want forensics down here right away. Yeah, and tell the DA that we need to talk. Witness protection? It allows us to keep an eye on you between now and the trial. Oh, that's all? There will be a few uh, adjustments. Yeah, such as? We'll uh, move you to another city and change your name. <laughs> oh, that's all. <laughs> Just for a few months. You'll have a bodyguard. Oh, goody. A partner for double solitaire. It's not as bad as it sounds, Miss Hunter. My business? Think of it as a well-earned vacation. Well, I can't afford a vacation, Miss Speary. If you don't testify, we don't have a case. I know that. So let's try and be creative. What does that mean? I'm not moving to another city, and I'm not going to change my name. I'm not giving up my business. What about the creative part? I'm getting to that. I locked myself out of here one night. Couldn't get that thing open to save my. Sorry, you were, uh, you were saying? Who else has a key besides you? No one. I mean, besides the super. Mrs. Kozlinski. What about your boyfriend? Well, I don't have a boyfriend. 
What about, uh, what's his name across the hall? Elliot? No, no. I mean, he doesn't have a key. Now that's a brand new lock. State of the art. I want you to log every call in and out. Why didn't you put a tap on the phone, Detective? I already have. But nothing is more accurate than personal observation. Name, time, and purpose of call. The lock? Needs an iron grate. No iron grate. This is better. Hungry? No. My breasts! What? Don't touch my breasts! Yeah, hey, I didn't go near you. Not me, silly. My chicken breasts. Special recipe. Mmm. Secret is cumin and a lemon wash. Lighten up, detective! You're sure? Oh, put the gun down. How can you tell? What is he doing here? He's a bodyguard, He's Detective Jack Brannigan. Then why was he touching your breasts? Hey, I was not touching her breasts. It was the, the chicken. Oh, honey. Oh, my God. What? You look terrible. Oh, sweetie, are you all right? I'm fine. All right. Listen, listen. I want you to know that whatever went on between you and Sophie... Nothing went on between me and Sophie. All right, okay. In any case, Mom wants you to know that she still loves you. Alma! And so do I. Where's Stanley? Who's Stanley? Don't mention his name around me. Not now, not ever! Oh, Lord. Who's Stanley? A beast. Her husband. You have a husband? Jack. Sorry. If you don't mind, my sister and I would like to talk. Go ahead. In private. I'm staying right here. What? That's the deal, remember? The creative part? Instead of witness protection, you get a bodyguard around the clock. I don't think I need your actual body in this apartment. Oh, I'm sorry. That was my understanding. And that's the deal. Children. Children. It's a lovely body. And I don't think we need to quarrel over it. That's him! He broke in. I saw it on the video. You're oh. right. He's, he's the one they call the dangerous offender. Don't shoot! Oh, my God. Oh, ah, Mrs. Ma please! Mrs. Oh, stop! stop. Yes. What? Yes. The police! Which what? Detective Brannigan. Oh. I I'm going to replace the locks. Uh, better you give me the money and Felix can do it. Uh, I don't think so, if you don't mind. Carly, I just saw Winifield on Extreme Close Up. He says you're suffering from isolation and abandonment syndrome. He offered to treat you. Oh, you poor dear. The only thing I'm suffering from is Winifield. Miss Hunter, I can't protect you. If anybody can just walk right in here anytime they want. This isn't just anybody. These are my neighbors. They're my friends. Well, that's going to have to change. Excuse me. Everyone, I'd really appreciate it if you could just leave. Hello? Is there any other kind? Hello, everybody, out! Let's go! I'm sorry, just... This time, if you don't mind. Carly, if there's anything I can do, she's fine. Thanks, Elliot. Excuse me, thank you. Goodbye, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Where's she gonna stay? The sofa. No, 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 I'm staying on the sofa. No, 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 no. 406 no, is not. empty. She could stay there. It's right across the hall. Felix, get the key. She's my yeah. sister. She's staying here, period. I'm staying here. That's the deal, all right? No more negotiating. found a number in his pocket for the hot cake hotline. I thought it was one of those fast food franchises that he was investing in. 
and then I get Mistress Helga on the line. You know, she's got one of those telephones where you can see the name of the person who's calling in. Mm -hmm. Well, she's a minute into a routine before she figures out I'm not Stanley. And I don't want a hot cake. He's a beast. Hey, at least it was just on the phone. What? Carly? It's the lying that hurts the most. You know, I mean, what else has he been up to? The bridge of trust has been burned. Anyway, Mama wanted me to come up here and see how you were doing. Oh, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah. It's just the way the media twists everything around, like Winifield's the victim and I'm the bad guy and nobody gives a damn about Sophie and Tobias. Listen, Mom worries about you being alone. Well, tell her that I've got my own personal bodyguard. Should I tell her he's got the hots for you? Brannigan? Brannigan? Oh, did you see the way he went all gooey when you pouted? Gooey? God, he's so serious. He has got a serious crush on you. For all we know, he's probably married. He's got 14 kids. <laughs> oh, no, he's single. I can spot a single guy at 50 paces. Really? <laughs> no, it's great. It's terrific. Thanks, Bob. I gotta go shopping. All right, I'll go with you. Cutie Radio just announced the first winner to the free catering contest, and the winner is Sidra Rajiv. Oh, uh, um, who's that? She's with Newman and Fisk. The ad agency, very big, very Tony. She wants a running buffet with hors d'oeuvres and California wine. Oh, that's good. Uh, you can do the cooking here. We'll send it over with one of my officers. What, one of your officers is gonna help serve food and drinks? <laughs> You said it was a buffet, right? They can serve themselves. No, 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 Jack. That's not how it works. I go with the food. That's the deal. And Alma can help me serve. You're going to have to cancel. What? Look, it's too risky, all right? We, we don't know the house. We don't know who's going to be there. After the trial, you can reschedule. OK. You're joking, right? Look, if I have to, I'll call the DA, and I'll have you formally subpoenaed and ordered into witness protection. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Oh, no, 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 don't cry. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Please, Miss Hunter. I can't believe you're doing this to me. I have to protect you. It's my job. Please don't cry. I'm sorry. Miss Hunter. <laughs> Maybe we can work something out. Yeah? OK, OK. <laughs> Dangerous out there? Yeah, 10 female ad executives without their husbands. Well, well, see how the worm has turned. Right. <laughs> Detective Brannigan, you look marvelous. The talks, the talks, quick. Talks. What happened? Where was that? Don't ask. Oh, my God. She told me to put it in her mouth. Somehow I missed. She moved her head on purpose, I swear. <laughs> can we help you? Uh, I have a request from my guests. What can we do for you? I don't think that'll be a problem. Or no, I'll tell the ladies. Take your shirt off. No. No way. It's your own fault, Jack. Ah, uh, my fault? Ah. Uh. You dumped those pastries down on a woman's dress, and now you've got everyone hot and bothered. Forget it. I'm not going back in there. What's the big deal? Just undo a few buttons. Excuse me. Listen, I draw the line at stripping, OK? No, you know what? That's it. I quit. Stri stripping? Who's saying anything about stripping? A couple of buttons, Jack. I've got to give them whatever they want. Fine. You take your shirt off. It's not me they want. It's you, those manly oh, arms, see. those powerful biceps, hey. <laughs> that broad back. Oh, come on. Just, just, just one. Stop it. OK, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Listen, I refuse to go back in there. Do you understand me? Yeah. Hey, that's it. Stop. Stop it. Come on. What's the matter with you? 
Don't. No, no, don't pout, okay? It's not gonna work. I'm a struggling businesswoman trying to make my way in a cruel world, Jack. I need you. Yes, you do. So let's be creative. What does that mean? Number one, you start taking this seriously. Who says I don't? Number two, no more using your apartment as a clubhouse. Just because I have friends drop... Nobody. Nobody goes in or out unless I know about it. And number three, Alma moves out and I move in. Alma stays. Alma goes. She stays. She goes. Stays. An iron grate on the living room window. How are we doing? The natives are getting very restless. Deal. <laughs> They don't want canapes. They want me. They want the full Monty. Well, that's fine. We can switch to asparagus spears wrapped in prosciutto. So you don't get burned. I have a better idea. I think I'm going to cool them off a little. No! <laughs> oh, Carly, darling, do we have any chocolate syrup? No. No. But I do have some cognac I used for the salad. No! Oh. 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 Here, Jack. Hold oh. Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Put this down here. Jack, you can light my fire anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say a word. How the hell am I going to write this up? There you are, dear. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry about about everything. Oh, don't mention it. <laughs> really. So, so you're not, you're not married. Hey, I thought I heard you two guys in here. Why is he naked? He's half naked. <laughs> and it's a long story. Yeah, I, uh, I should get going. I'm all ears. Carly, I told you I wanted to see the mail first. This was in the mailbox? Yeah, I, I don't know. Elliot brought it up. Elliot has a key to your mailbox? Yes, because I forget sometimes, and it gets full, and the mailman can't get that little door shut. Who else has a key? Mrs. K? What's wrong? Don't touch it. One, two, three, four. Someone's knocking at the door. Five, six, seven, eight. Death and Carly have a date. Let's go. What is going on? Ask your friend. Oh, Jack, come on. Stay inside. I'll be back later. What did he do? Nothing. Come on. How long have you known Winifield? I don't know him. Elliot, please. I took courses from him, like 10,000 other people. Not quite. You were one of his research assistants. You took part in several of his studies. It paid for the courses? Right. The courses. Interpersonal dysfunction. Me and 200 other people. Look, I'm shy, OK? It's hard to meet girls if you're shy. Not if they live across the hall. A workshop on overcoming sexual anxieties? It's not what you think. I blush. I, I get clammy palms. I mean, I used to. Winifield, he was a big help. 
made me feel less self-conscious and realize, you know, other people were nervous oh, too. Oh, oh, so that's why you kept in touch. It's a follow-up service at the clinic, so you keep your confidence up, that's all. It's not a cult. You manage a children's bookstore. Right. Lots of uh, limericks and rhymes, right? You think I'm threatening Carly, right? Because I'm the geeky neighbor across the hall. Well, you want to know what I think, detective? I think you're hassling me because you're the one who has the hots for her. And that's why you don't like us being friends. I'm in your way. My God, a birthday party for a nine-year-old. Honey, all they're going to want is hot dogs and colas. Well, that just wouldn't do for Christopher Hodges III, would it? What did they even enter a contest for? Because it's free. <laughs> you know what Daddy would say. How do you think they got rich in the first place? I asked you to keep this door locked. We um, released Elliot. Really? I'm surprised you didn't hang him on the spot. Elliot, I am so sorry. I don't want to talk to you. He had access to this apartment and your mailbox. He was involved with the Winnifield Clinic, and in my opinion, he has very strong feelings for you. Oh, well, in my opinion, he's a very good friend, and there was no need for you to bully him like that. You know, I'm trying to do the right thing here. So far, it's cost me my privacy and my reputation, and now it's costing me my friends, all because of a couple of letters and some crank calls. Letters? Le Those were death threats. Look, you know, if you would just go into witness protection, we wouldn't have to worry. No, you wouldn't have to worry. I wouldn't have a life. On the other hand, if I didn't testify, I wouldn't have to worry about anything. No, no, you wouldn't, which is exactly what Winnifield wants. I have not had time to do a complete security check on the Hodges house. I'm going to need another 24 hours. <laughs> it's a birthday party for a nine-year-old. His birthday is today. That's where I'm going, with or without my bodyguard. What is this crap? It's a burger. Uh, Vietnamese style, sort of. It's crap, that's what it is. I want a burger and fries. Well, this is the food that your parents chose, Christopher. I don't care about my parents. My parents are crap. Okay. Could I borrow your gun? Hey, burgers, dogs, fries. Don't you start. I could pick some up down the street. No, because the Hodges were very specific about their menu. But they're not even here. Look, let me help, okay? I'm good with kids. No, just stay out of it. Okay? Where are the burgers? I told you, those are way better than burgers. Help the maid! <laughs> sorry. I can see that you're sorry. So much for the food. I'm hungry. Tough. Okay, I guess I'll have to eat dirt. Christopher. I have to eat something. Christopher. Happy birthday. You know what this is? I got one of those too. At the joke store. <laughs> 206 here, Detective Brannigan. Great actor. I'm at 311 Seton Street. I have a juvenile in custody. I've got obstructing justice and disturbing the peace. 
Roger, I'm gonna try and sort this out myself, but you better stand by to notify Juvie Hall. Roger, Do you know what disturbing the peace is, Christopher? Obstructing justice? No? A smart aleck like you? Well, that's okay. You know what? They'll explain it all to you when we take you down to Juvie Hall. You know what Juvie Hall is, don't you? It's prison for bad little boys who don't do what they're told. Are you reading me, Christopher? They're opening presents. Everything under control? They're afraid to speak. <laughs> That's great. See, I told you, I'm good with kids. Aha. Uh -huh. So are you that nice with women? Ah, uh, even nicer. Hard to imagine. I know. Hey, I'm just an old-fashioned guy. No kidding. Excuse me. Get this. Here. Was that OK? Um, yeah, I mean, felt OK. Uh, Carly, I don't, I don't think that, you know, we should. What is going on here? Mr. Hodges, you're, you're back early. Is this your idea of suitable behavior in front of young children? It's him. He was going to shoot me. You threatened my son. I exercised appropriate adult authority. He was out of control. They were getting a little restless. And she tried to make us eat all this foreign junk. I told you I wanted proper food for these children. You see, they wanted hot dogs. And you specifically said no hot dogs, no hamburgers, and no french fries. You don't tell me what I said. I know what I said. Hey, 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 just, just relax. Hey, don't keep your hands off of me. Smash him, Dad. Look, I want you to apologize to this boy right now. For what? I'm warning you, apologize. That would only be reinforcing his delinquent behavior, no. Smash him, Dad. Oh. My hand hurts. Dad? Shut up! Delicious. Delicious. What's that sauce they use? That's uh, ketchup, mustard, and mayo squished oh. together. I'll tell you, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. <laughs> Do you think he meant it? Well, about suing? Yeah. I'm sure he did. I, mean, I think his lawyer will talk him out of it. Given the facts, his son's behavior, the rat, <sighs> the fact that he more or less punched himself up. <laughs> well, that's your word against his. Hey, I've got an eyewitness. No. No? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I'll tell you, some kids should be drowned at birth. That's a little harsh. You think? Yeah. I take it you don't have any. Nope. Dedicated bachelor, huh? Actually, I'm divorced. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pry. No, it's, it's OK. Mm. It was a long time ago. I was too wrapped up in my job. So you, you like being a cop? Yeah, I love it. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, everything's real, and everything matters. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like the whole city's your family. We're all connected, whether you like it or not. You have a... Oh, no. <laughs> Okay. Did I get it? Um. Let me in. I know you're in there. Freeze! Hey, hey you don't understand, bud. Ooh. What are you doing here?
here. You know him? He's my husband. Arrest him. Alma, my baby face. I just want to talk to you. Broke my heart. Six years of trust and fidelity gone like dust in the wind. That's him, the killer, Felix Hitton. Now, don't hit me. I didn't kill anybody. I just want to talk to my wife. Doesn't mean to say you have to scream at the top of your lungs? Forgive me, Alma. I beg you. I'll never do it again. They didn't mean anything they? to me. I thought it was just one. You're the only one I love. Please come back to me. Get up, Stanley. You look ridiculous. Get up. If you're staying over there, is it okay if Stanley stays here with me? No. Well, she's not staying with you. He's not staying with you. He can stay with Felix. I don't want to stay with Felix. I want to stay with my wife. That's right. And who the hell are you, anyway? Carly's bodyguard. Yeah. The bones are blue, blood runs red. The doctor will live, the chef will be dead. Who is it? It's the wrong number. All right, I want everyone out of here, except for Carly. You two, sleep in my room. Don't argue. Just go. Just leave your door open. Well, you bet it will. <laughs> Good night. And where are you planning on sleeping? Right here, right by the door. Okay, what's wrong? Nothing. It was just Stanley. Oh, I know. It was only Stanley. I know. Good night. I'm taking myself off this case. What? I've become emotionally involved, and it's affecting my performance. I see. And which aspect of your performance is it affecting? Hey. I let her dress me up as a waiter. All right. I did a strip tease at a dinner party. I, I nearly busted this nine-year-old kid at his own birthday party. I... Last night, last night, I almost shot someone because I wasn't where I was supposed to be. What's your point? Point? My point is that I am not exercising my best judgment, and it's jeopardizing her security. I see. I just, you know, get someone else, Violet. No. If I take you off the case, it may spook her, and it, she may refuse to testify. And getting her butt in the witness stand is what this is all about, lest we forget. Just do your job, Jack. The truth is, you make people feel good about sex, and that's why they don't want you to be guilty. Oh, I think it's the opposite that's true, Morton. Clearly, people are bothered that this woman, uh, Carly Hunter, the uh, caterer, can make an unsubstantiated allegation against me, and the next thing you know, I'm on trial for murder. In fact, lately, I have had to persuade a lot of people not to act out their rage against Miss Hunter. You see the irony here. She's accusing me, and I'm protecting her. Sometimes I have to ask myself, why am I doing this? <laughs> oh, God. Are you sure you don't want me to stay? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. I'm okay. No, they're going to get you into that court. They're going to twist everything around until even you won't remember what you saw. I'll remember what I saw. Don't you worry. You are so stubborn. Come here. I love you. Oh, thanks for coming. Okay. You take care. Stanley, no more hotcakes. Unless I'm cooking them. I promise. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.
Tonight's the last of the free catering contests. It's a murder mystery night. The home of Lou and Frida Tenzer, I know. Yeah. Somebody dies at dinner and everybody gets to figure out who done it. And we all play a part. You too? Yeah. And you. If you're going. Of course I'm going. You all right? Your eyes are all red. Well, oh, I'm... <laughs> I want you to reconsider witness protection. This could go on for months. No. Why are you acting like this? You could have been killed last night. <laughs> By Stanley? It could have been anyone. But I wasn't thinking about that, was I? Oh, well, you took your eye off the ball, Jack. Shame, shame, shame. That's right. That's right. Okay, what am I supposed to do? All right, um, okay, we bring the soup in, and Rupert, the butler, that's you, stands at the uh, head of the table. Colette, the French maid, that's me, stands at the foot. Uh, which is which? Just stand opposite me. And then um, you say, you say... Uh, dinner is served. And that's what we do. We start serving, and then when I get to Mrs. Tenser, that's when the lights go out. And the gunshot. And then when the lights come back on again, um, oh, Mrs. Tenser's dead. Uh, okay, soup. I hate people who aren't serious about meals. It's so shallow of them. <laughs> well, speaking of meals. <laughs> Dinner served. What? Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 how did that happen? I didn't even hit the switch. <laughs> My Japanese urn. It's priceless. Oh dear. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. Never had special effects before. I'm telling you, your wife can act her socks off. <laughs> Where's Norman? Nobody move. Don't tell me. The butler did it. Nobody move. I told you to stay put. Stay here. But... I mean it, Carly. Don't move. Mm-hmm. 
Missing something? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> Drop the gun. Drop it! Come on, everybody, they're in here. What's the problem, detective? You see, it's all part of the show. It's not Norman. It's Chester Winifield. Professor Passion. Game's up, Winifield. You've been recognized. What are you gonna do? You're gonna kill us all? This is the gun that killed Tobias and Sophie? It is better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. Definitely the best one, yes. <laughs> Winifield had a key. Mrs. Tenzer used to be one of his clients. He just let himself in. Bail hearing's tomorrow morning. He won't get out this time. Do you want me to spend the night? No, I'd rather be alone, thanks. Okay. Come on, Jack, be happy. Carly's safe, Winifield's going down, and uh, you might even end up with a book deal. I had six agents call me today. Ain't life grand. Oh, come on, Jack. The people wish to express their gratitude by taking you out for a steak and a beer. <laughs> I bow to the wishes of the people. <laughs> Hey, Jack, it's Carly. Uh, could you give me a call when you get a chance? Thanks. Oh, 
Elliot. Hi. Uh, I saw in the news about Winifield. They, they got him locked up. Oh, that's great. I, I thought you might uh, give me a cup of tea, you know, if, uh, if that cop's off the case now. Yeah, he's off the case. I would love to give you a cup of tea. Come on in. I'm sorry about Jack. Who? Detective Brannigan. I'm really sorry about the way he treated you. Oh. It's Jack, is it? Well, we did spend a lot of time together. But he's off the case now. Well, he's off my case, thank God. Well, that's good. <laughs> you know, things can get back to normal around here. I, I was thinking maybe we could go out. Now? No, sometime. I mean... Uh, a date. First thing I have to do is get my business back on the rails. We could drive up the coast, maybe buy some lobsters and uh, you could cook them. I have to go to the bank first thing in the morning and beg them for mercy. You want to do that? Do what? Go to the bank? No, drive up the coast, like I said. Uh, just the two of us. Elliot, I am real tired. So, let's talk about this tomorrow, okay? You're not listening to me. Jack, huh? You and Jack have a good time? After everything I did for you? You didn't need him. I could have looked after you just fine. Elliot, I'm right! Oh, but you wanted Jack, huh? You're home, in the attic. I made tea. Would you like some? I'd love some. You did all this, Elliot? Yes. Do you like it? It wasn't easy getting all this stuff up here without being noticed. I bet. Oh, I need my hands. No, you don't. No, I tried it. Why are you doing this, Elliot? I love you. You never noticed. You're right. I... I didn't notice. You just took me for granted, Carly, and, until Sophie got shot, and, and then you were so scared, you practically jumped into my arms. So I made the tape. I wrote those notes. I'm sorry. But it worked. Until that stupid cop came along. Jack, this is because of Jack? Come on, Carly. Don't tell me there was nothing going on between you two. Jack, I was afraid, Elliot, and besides, he's gone now. Yes, 
He is. Carly? Carly? Roses are red, violets are blue, Elliot and Carly in a room built for two. You're so creative. <sighs> Thank you. I've always liked that about you. You know I've always liked you, right? Well, if you like me so much, how come you never said anything? Well, you're not the only one who's shy, you know. I mean, didn't you ever wonder why I don't have a boyfriend? I guess you're so wrapped up in yourself. You never thought about me, did you? I guess not. No. Elliot? I'm sorry. If we're gonna have a normal life together, then you're gonna have to learn how to trust me a little. <sighs> Untie my hands. I want to trust you. And I wanna trust you too. So Elliot, untie my hands. You're not trying to con me, are you? Oh, it's you. You okay? I'm fine. Of course she's fine. I wasn't going to hurt her, Jack. It was just a game. She wanted it this way. Shut up, Elliot. I mean it. I wasn't going to hurt her. You can't prove I was. I see you've taken my security measures to heart. Your door's unlocked. Well, it's, um, it's hard to hear the doorbell when I'm cooking. How's Elliot? Oh, not bad, considering he's been charged with kidnapping, forcible confinement, sexual assault, and a half dozen other felonies. Oh, wow. Oh, poor Elliot. Well, I feel sorry for him. I don't know why. Because you're a kind person who always thinks the best of people. In other words, I'm a sucker. No, maybe a bit too trusting, that's all. So what happens now? <laughs> um, there'll be a trial, and you'll have to testify. Well, how am I going to prove anything? It's his word against mine. No, you have an eyewitness. Right, of course. <laughs> all right. So I guess your job's done. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess I should, uh, get the keys back. Yoo-hoo! What's he doing here? Why aren't you guarding Elliot? He's in jail. Good. After what he put dear Carly through. Oh, to think I nurtured that viper right under my very roof. <gasps> Oh, any chance of a snack, dear? Felix looks peckish. I should get going. Jack. Yeah? Um... Uh, the keys. <laughs> oh. Right. Sorry.
He is a very handsome man. Yes, he is. And you're in love with him. Oh, the policeman. Oh, you poor dear. Look, stay there. Felix, come with me. Detective! 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 Where do you think you're going? Excuse me? How could you leave the scene of a crime? What crime? A B and E. There's been no B and E, Mrs. K. Oh, there certainly has. Felix, break down the door. See? A B and E. Write it up. <sighs> you people are completely insane. You know that. <laughs> God, how embarrassing. That should hold for the time being. Oh, my son can fix anything. <laughs> oh, come on, Felix. Time to go. Work's done. Come on. Do you want to stay for dinner, Jack? Sure. There's enough for everyone. Uh, get out of here, Felix. It's time to go home. Thank you, dear. Some other time. Pretty subtle, aren't they? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know which one I'm going to kill first. Oh, no, that would be homicide. See, I'm, I'm a cop, remember? Right. So what are you going to do? Arrest me? I might. I can't imagine what Mrs. K was thinking. I think she was thinking, try and bring us together. Well, she's pretty eccentric. I think she's perfectly sane. for dinner. Something that'll keep. <laughs> Come here. No. 